Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to isolate bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus. I find out that there aren't a lot of videos on YouTube that teach you how to isolate bacteria. I mean, they teach you how to grow some random bacteria and that's it. Which is something we do all the time with our spoiled food. So in this video, I hope I can not only show you how to grow bacteria, but also know what bacteria that you are growing. Start with a bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus, or simply S. aureus. It is a very common bacteria found on human skin as part of the normal flora. Now you might think you don't need this bacteria, but the principle of isolation is the same. And since this can be relatively easier to do, we might just as well use this as a practice. I put the material you will need in the description sector, so make sure to check there to prepare the things you need. First, start with a flat surface like this, which is my desk. Clean the surface and wipe it with 70% alcohol. Then, get an alcohol lamp if you have a burst burner or alcohol torch, which will also do. Make sure you use it safely. This is the medium that I will be using today. It's called Blood Agar Play, or BAP. It contains 5% of sheep or horse blood, and it's a very common medium that you can easily buy online. In this video, I will need around 20 of these. And this is sterilized cotton rod, which is also easy to get online or from any pharmacy. Now I light my lamp and we are ready to go. First, take one cotton rod and use it to swap the nose and nasal vestibule, which is the front part of the nose cavity. This is the part where this bacteria commonly lives in, also at the armpit and inguinal region. After that, wipe the cotton rod on the medium like this to transfer the bacteria onto the medium and that just complete our initial sampling. Now I flip the plate and put it in a bag and leave it in a warm place for it to grow as a process we normally call incubation. This will take a few days if your place is not warm enough. In the video, it took 3 days in which the temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. After incubation, your play might look like this, which has some semi-transparent part. In that case, I suggest you redo the sampling process. Or, your play might look like this. The part that becomes transparent happens something called beta hemolysis. What happens is that bacteria breaks down hemoglobin inside the median completely to make it colorless. This effect is one of the features of S. aureus, so that's the spot we want to look for. Next, we have to isolate pure bacteria. The method I will be using is called strict play method, which I have had one video before if you don't know how to do it. I'll focus on the center of those transparent spots picking up small yellowish round colony, transferring them onto new plate and incubating them in the same womb's place. Repeat this process until you acquire a single pure colony like this. This might take several times. Here I have four pure samples. I mark them as as 1, 2, 4, and 5. Don't ask where the 3 goes. I'll pick the colony one more time to make sure I have enough bacteria for the next step. This next step, I'll have to make sure my pure sample is the as aureus I want. For that, I have to run some tests to find out. So here, get myself a note to write down each test result. I'll be conducting 4 tests here with 1 extra at the end of the video, so be sure to watch till the end. First is a grand stain of the sample to see if it's a gram-positive cervical bacteria. This test requires grand stain chemicals and a microscope. 
Grandstand chemicals can be purchased online as kit set, very easy to use. As for the microscope, you will need one that can do a thousand time magnification, basically a student or amateur grade microscope. The Grandstand kit you buy shall come with four solutions, as stand, fixer, distend, and counter stand. Use an inoculation loop to pick some bacteria and put them onto a microscopy slide. Then follow the manufacturer's instruction to apply and wash off each of the solution in the right order to get a stand sample slide. Observe the slide under the microscope to check the stand color and shape of the bacteria. These are the samples I have. As we can see here, all samples besides S2 are gram-positive cervical bacteria. Although S2 is rod shape, which is not the bacteria we're looking for, I'll still include it in the following test. The second test I'm going to do is called catalyst test. Catalase is an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water which can help bacteria deal with this harmful chemical. To do this test, simply put some bacteria on a glass slide and drop hydrogen peroxide onto it. Bacteria that are catalyst positive will generate bubbles instantly, while a negative one will not. As you can see here, all of my samples are positive in this test. The next test is the gelatin hydrolysis test, based on whether the bacteria can hydrolyze gelatin. To do this test, first I prepare two types of improvised gelatin agar. One only gelatin and one with additional agar rolls. I'll make a video about making this agar later as a supplement video. In this test, if bacteria can hydrolyze gelatin, it will create a lighter colored ring around the colony like this on the gelatin plus agarose plate. And on the gelatin only plate, the plate will be liquefied, which is very easy to see here. And you can know that all of my samples are positive as well. The fourth test is this mannitol test in which I'll be using this mannitol salt agar. This agar contains mannitol and high concentration of salt, which can be used to test two properties of a bacteria. First being if the bacteria can grow in a high salt environment, second being if the bacteria can hydrolyze mannitol and generate acid. This agar is also easy to buy, just ask the one who you got your blood agar from. If you want to make it by yourself, I have a video about how to make it, you can go check it out. I inoculate my samples on the agar and wait two days for it to grow and this is the result. The one that turned yellow means the bacteria can hydrolyze mannitol and create acid, which make the indicator in the agar to change color from red to yellow as a positive result. And the one that does not change color is considered to be negative. Here, S1, 4, and 5 are positive, and S2 is negative. Now let's check the result from all of the tests. If the bacteria that you have got all positive results from the test above, like what I have here, congratulations! I think you have successfully isolated S aureus from your body. Now you can give it a name or something. 
The process above is the basic of how to isolate bacteria of interest. Take samples, purify and identify. I hope you like it and I'm looking forward to making more videos like this in the future. Make sure you soak all your waste in bleach to kill the bacteria on it before discarding them, if you don't have an autoclave for waste. Now it's the extra test I mentioned before. It's called coagulase test. It is a very important test used to identify S. aureus. The reason why I put it in the extra is because this test requires plasma to work, which is not very DIY friendly material. Normally use animal plasma like rabbit, but in here I use human plasma. First I dilute the plasma with sterilized saline and mix with bacteria that I want to test. Then put it in an incubator along with a plasma only negative control for an hour. After that, check the mixture every half hour and compare with the control to see if precipitates shows up. Asaurus has coagulates that will make the plasma coagulate. It can use this method to protect himself from being eaten by immunocytes like neutrophil, aka white blood cell. And this feature can help us distinguish S. aureus from S. epidemides, which is another common skin bacteria. Now let's check the plasma. You can see here sample 1 has precipitates but not sample 2. Also sample 4. And sample 5 both have precipitates as well in which the result corresponds with other tests I just performed. And that's for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.